My mother was into classical music and modern jazz. My dad was into big band and s sort of more standard jazz. My sister was into rock and roll and soul. Mm -hmm. Didn't have any proponents of country at the time, but nevertheless, that's how we broke so it down. So what's Sass family? Um, my sister, me, mom Just, and dad. Okay, four. Okay, mm -hmm. wonderful. And do you remember the first performance you went to? I do. Actually, I remember that I had an incredible year, or like year or two. Um, my, uh, my mother took me to the Metropolitan Opera when I was nine to see the Flying Dutchman. And this is the old Met, which kind of puts me in perspective, <laughs> age-wise. And, um, and I saw my first opera then. Um, I saw My Fair Lady. Wow. Um, and I was just the whole time. That's why I think I grew up to be a set designer. I was not sure exactly of everything that was going on, but mm -hmm. I loved the way it looked. <laughs> you mentioned set design. Mm -hmm. We're going to sort of um, go off script a little bit and ask, what is the role of the set designer? When someone goes oh. to the theater and sees all that wonderful stuff up there, that's part of what the set designer does. So mm -hmm. what is a set designer? Set designer is the person who works with a director to realize the play in the space and time that the director wants to set it. Um, mostly you're doing service to actors and to the director because you don't want to design a set that is difficult to move on. Mm -hmm. You want the set to be expressive of a particular style or time period or you know, sometimes it's very abstract, um, but you're there pretty much to to get at the things that the that the director wants to get at. Mm -hmm. You know, perhaps give them a bit of something. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's a chair or a design or something that they own mm -hmm. that the character owns, you reveal character from that. Mm -hmm. So you also help to do that as well. So it can be as simple as almost a bare stage to Absolutely. something as ornate as a castle. Absolutely. Or more. Yeah, turntables. And these days with projection and, um, you know, all of the different new theatrical techniques, uh, it, it's just about your budget. Yes. <laughs> I've always had to be really creative because I'd have really Small little budget. budgets. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's okay too. <laughs> now, you talked a little bit about having seen that set. I don't know who, if, if you know who the designer of that set was, but what I'm sort of moving to is, who are some of the people that you idol? Oh, that I as idol. As a designer, as an artist, as an actor, performer? Um, well, Audre Lorde, Pat Parker, a lot of my heroes, June Jordan, have been black women, um, especially queer black women, but just, and women in general, um, I think people who've had to really make a commitment to themselves to take that step forward and say, you know what, this is who I am, this is who you have to deal with, mm -hmm. take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate mm -hmm. those people and they're the ones who really inspire me. And what impact have they had on you as an artist? I think uh, they've made me want to make a place for other artists to mm -hmm. tell their stories, mm -hmm. um, especially in the queer community and especially in communities of color. Mm -hmm. um, it, I think it's really, really of paramount importance to give artists a place to bring up the issues within the community, to have a discussion, a dialogue with the audience, with the greater community. Um, I love to have that, uh, that opportunity to commission an artist and say, think about this. Mm -hmm. you know, um, one of the shows that we're doing in this festival is called Remembering June Jordan. Mm -hmm. And uh, June was just an amazing poet and also somebody who felt that she had to dedicate herself to also bringing up the next generation of poets and making people feel that freedom of being able to express yourself and having the right to express yourself. 
So we have um, three or four of Poetry for the People folks. Wonderful. In Afro Solo, we were very fortunate to have um, June perform in one of our shows. Right. And she's just phenomenal, you know, not only as an artist, but as a person and just very dynamic. And she was one of those people that you felt a vibe from when you were around her, mm -hmm. which was really wonderful. And those of you who don't know that June passed away a number of years ago, uh, uh, issues around breast cancer. And she fought a very valiant mm -hmm. fight. So I can certainly understand why she would be someone that you would admire. Mm -hmm. When you were speaking of people who you, who were idols of yours, you mentioned women in particular. And I just mm -hmm. wonder if there's anything particular about uh, men, maybe straight men, queer men, that don't fit into that, or it's just the women that you see more in those roles. Does well, that make sense first? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that, um, I, I think it's really important to have, I mean, among my idols, um, I, I have a whole host of, uh, of men as well. And I think it's, uh, you know, I certainly have a balance. I have trans idols. I have, actually, there are some people that I idolize now who are probably in their 20s who I think are just doing remarkable work. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I, you know, I'm an equal opportunity idolizer. <laughs> right. You also said something a few moments ago about what I want to ask you uh, about is the process of you said that you would give the artist an idea or a thought. Mm -hmm. What is it about that process uh, that you enjoy, like, of seeing the little seed until it flowers and blossoms on stage? What's that like for you? Oh, I, I think that's probably one of the most rewarding parts of this job. And this job is done in concert because, of course, I'm in the arts. Um, in concert with a full-time day job that I work as well as putting on this enormous festival. Um, I think being able to commission an artist to create new work already helps to validate that artist in his or her own eyes. They begin to see themselves differently and they begin to take themselves seriously as an artist because someone else has put their faith in them. And then they produce a program, they um, may produce new work, they may curate other people into this eventually, they may decide to form their own organization. Um, so yes, watching people and you think, well, there's, there's a germ of something there, mm -hmm. you know, this is, this is good. And then coming back a year later and going, wow, they're, now they're knocking my socks off, you know, so it, that's incredibly rewarding. But it also, I think, says something about you in your eye and your reading of people to trust the person to come up with something. Although we also know as artists that there needs to be room to fail. Absolutely. If, if we call an experience that doesn't work out the way we maybe intended to a failure, those can be successes also. But knowing that just because you ask for A, you may not get B. You might mm -hmm. get D. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be willing to let the the artist respond in the way that they need to mm -hmm. and to be able to build something mm -hmm. from themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a commissioning program that we call Creating Queer Community that mm -hmm. meets on the 30th of June. Mm -hmm. And that program commissions anywhere from five to 15 artists to create new work for the festival. And, you know, we provide grant writing assistance to them. We teach them how to write a grant. That's how, that's the initial um, meeting that they go to. They have to attend this meeting and they fill out a grant form that is simpler than one they'll ever do in the future. <laughs> and, um, I work with them in terms of uh, developing a venue and working on the piece and um, try to find them, you know, the kind of support that they need. We give them technical support, right. publicity, mm -hmm. 